June is also the month of mission. Today, we look at that beginning where Jesus said, go forth into the world and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them everything that I have taught you and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ sent us out. Next week we celebrate what's called Pentecost, the pouring out of the Spirit onto all people. This week we start by looking at what is the mission of the church. And for the next five weeks we're going to look at what is the mission of the church. That's also what June's about. We're starting this week with a simple thing called acceptance. The beginning of the mission for the church is acceptance. Let us pray. Lord, in hearing your word, we trust your promise of grace. Today, Lord, we ask that you help us tell the whole truth about ourselves and beg God's mercy for renewal and changes in our life. Lord, you call us to everlasting springs, to your everlasting water, to your ever abundant water, that we are drenched and we are reformed and we are transformed to be more like you. Lord, we look to turn to our neighbors and to help them show you through us. And yet, Lord, we know we are not always like that. But we stand before you, Lord, as open vessels, looking for guidance into unity for the sake of your world. We ask all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. Our responsive scripture this morning comes from Psalm 67. And if you say the highlighted and underlined part. Okay. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May God be merciful and bless us. Your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us and people all over the world will fear him. Let us pray. Holy God, whose voice is heard in the thunder and in the silence, speak to us now by the power of your spirit that we may hear your word for us today. In Jesus' name we ask this, amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Acts, as I was telling the children. And it's from Acts 9 through 15. And it's about Paul and his companions travel from one place to another. So let us hear these words. I'm afraid I had a bit of a problem with some of these place names because it's kind of all Greek to me. <laughs> that night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there pleading with him, come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave from Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. We boarded a boat at Troas and sailed straight across to the island of Samothrace. And the next day we landed at Neapolis. From there we reached Philippi, a major city of that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a riverbank 
where we thought people would be meeting for prayer, and we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Theatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She was baptized along with other members of her household and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. Thank you. Today we start a number of weeks looking at the mission of the church. Mission starts, as I said, with acceptance. The first thing we are called to accept is that we're not in charge. This is God's mission to the world and the church is the mission. We are the hands, we are the feet, we are the voice. And interestingly, when we open ourselves up to God's leading and the direction of the Spirit, we will find that things almost never work the way we planned. But the key, of course, is we have to accept it. This particular passage is, is a passage of change. There's all sorts of changes in it. The background is, is, is Paul and his companions had tried to go to Asia, and, and it says the Lord prevented us from going there. So they wandered around a little bit further, and next thing they know, they find God calling them to Greece, northern Greece, and, and to the city. So as we can see, plans of people and plans of God are often different. Now, here's the interesting thing I find in here. One of the things we discover first off is, is there's no complaints recorded. Ah, oh, that's not working. What's God thinking? Sometimes we do that, don't we? When we're trying to do something and it's just not working, we go, what is God thinking? Why isn't it working? But that's not recorded. We don't hear any of that. And, and we don't hear any discussion about disappointments. We, we hear simply stated, but the Lord didn't allow us to go there. In that statement alone, there's this wonderful, innate acceptance and knowledge that they are not in charge, but God is. And God is directing their actions. And if they accept that, which they do, then they wait for the leading of the Spirit. The, it, and, and once the Spirit starts to lead, they listen and accept. Now, one of the things I, I find interesting about this is, is Paul received his directions in a vision, in a dream. And he shared it with the others. And they immediately set off. Now that's very un-Presbyterian. One of us receives a vision. We share it with our session. We share it with our board of managers. We make a committee. We do a study. We have a strategic plan. And then four or five years down the road, we head off, maybe. But that's not what happens here. Notice the movement. Paul shares, the others listen, and they make a decision and go. They go across the Mediterranean to northern Greece, to Europe, not to Asia where they had been originally planning. They go to Macedonia. And, and it's a funny thing, I was flicking through the channels the other day and I noticed there's the Macedonian hour. I, yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> Um, I didn't understand the language or anything. I didn't even realize Macedonia still existed. Apparently it does. They didn't wait around. God had given them a message and they acted on it. 
They didn't debate the possibilities. They didn't debate whether it was a true vision of God, or nor did they spend endless amount of time wondering and strategizing. They just simply went. And as you remember, I said to the kids, they went without money. They didn't have money, they didn't have jobs. They didn't have anything to give but themselves. But what they accepted was that God was leading and teaching them something. And so they went. And when we accept those things, suddenly our mission becomes God's, not ours. And when the church accepts that we are God's mission and we are the hands and feet, suddenly we are the body of Christ. We're not the church. We are not the building. When I say church, I'm talking about building because a lot of times, come see our building. No, come see us. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. We discover that God's mission here is now. It's not later on. Divisions God gives us, directions God gives us, ministries that we have are for now. And our mission is also now, not later on. We talk a lot about vision. And we talk about what vision is and what our vision is and, and, and what it is that we want to do and, and how it is we see ourselves doing it. And, and we place it after mission and we do a lot of this. And, and for the church, it's kind of a funny thing because Paul received a vision. So his little group, his ministry has a vision already. Come and help us. And that's what they set off to do. They didn't write a mission statement. They didn't do anything like that. They just had it off because it wasn't their mission. Here's the interesting thing. A poll was conducted of Presbyterians, and this, this is specifically Presbyterians a number of years ago, about how many people had ever received a vision, what they believed to be a vision from God. Now, you don't have to hold up your hands. I, I'm not asking you to do that. You don't have to hold up your hands, but did you know that more than 60% of the congregation said they believed they had received a vision from God? When they polled Presbyterian ministers, more than 80% of Presbyterian ministers believed that they had received a vision from God. However, however, before you go, wonderful, it is wonderful. God is talking to the church today, but, what happens with the vision? You received a vision last night. Did you share it this morning? Most of us are afraid to share our visions, are afraid to say what God is saying to us. Most of us are held back from doing these things because of inhibitions and because if we give that over to God, we're not in control anymore. And once we lose control, that means the Holy Spirit is in control. And God is in control, and now God is leading us. And that means next week when you come to church, it's not gonna look anything like it did this week. Much like all of a sudden the buds come out and things change, so do the church. God's qualities have never changed. They're constant. They're timeless, they're internal, they're dependable. They are the most marvelous thing in the world. But how God relates to the world has changed over and over and over again. The biggest one, we had the Jews, the people of God. But God, they did not go out and evangelize the world and convert the world the way they were called to be the light of the world. So what did God do? God sent his son. Well, okay, let's try something new. So God sent Jesus to us so that now everyone would be open. God relates to the world differently all the time. God relates to different people in different times all the time with the same qualities. Whose vision are we holding on to? Is it ours or is it God's?
That brings us to acceptance. Once we give over the idea that we're in control and we accept the idea that God's in control, it feels a little bit like we're being manipulated, doesn't it? If we don't have control of anything, what's the point? Where's all this free will come in? What happened to our freedom of choice? What happened to our individuality? If God is just in control, are we just a cog in the wheel moving along? And God is just directing us? No, that's not what God says. God says, I love the world so much, I sent my son so that everyone who believes in him may be saved. Love. God loves the world so much. And God loves the world so much that he has called us together as his people to do what? Love the world. Accept the people in the world that God loves. Call them together and share ourselves with them just as Jesus shared himself with us. It's not done because we have to. It's done because we choose to. And it's done because God loves us. Holy, completely, just as we are, warts and all. That's how God loves us. Completely, totally. And God sends us into the world in his image to do exactly that. Love the world as he has loved us. God calls us, come, gather on Sunday morning. Tell all about the wonderful thing God has done all during the week for us. All the adventures we have had talking to people about God. All the ways that God has called us to share our lives with those around us. And share that in fellowship. Remember we talked about fellowship? Fellowship is not just getting together for coffee, but getting together for coffee to talk about what God is doing in our lives. That's what God is calling us to. That's the acceptance God is calling to us. Not only that we are entirely accepted, but all people are entirely accepted. God's love for humankind reflects their need for God. And our need for God and our love for God is reflected to all people through our actions, through our mission. Paul's vision was not just to go and help, though. Sometimes, during the 60s especially, this became incredibly popular, the, the social justice thing. Now, one of the reasons I point out quite clearly that Paul didn't take anything is because when he heard the call for help, he didn't pack some medical supplies or some food or whatever else, a, a bag of Bibles. That's not what he packed. What he sent was himself. Because you can't know the needs of the people until you interact with them. And he did. He went and he interacted. Now Paul's general plan was to go into a city, go to the synagogue, and preach in the synagogue. He couldn't do that there. Philippi did not allow other religions within the city. Only Roman. Only Roman religion. You had to be outside of the city. So therefore he reasoned that if there were any Jews there or any God believers, they would be by the river because rivers are important to Jews. So he goes off and he finds them there. But he didn't find who he expected. He found a woman, a merchant. And, he, and they sat down and they shared their stories with her. And God opened her heart. Simple. Does that sound complicated to anyone? It's not you doing the work, is it? You sit down and have coffee and say, hey, you know what? We just traveled over the Mediterranean Sea and we came here because we had a vision that God had said, come to us. And come to you, we did. And this is, this is what we're doing. And God opened their heart. Here's the interesting thing. It says Lydia was baptized and accepted God's word and some of her household. Now, Ralph and I were talking this morning. We were talking about throwing the seed out. We, we, you never know what happens with the seed that you toss out. Some falls on good ground. Some falls on bad ground. Some's choked out. 
but we're called to do that. And we find that this mission experience that Paul shares with us in Acts does exactly that. Because of the love of God, because of the love of God for his people, because of the love of God's people for God going out to the people that God loves, ah, it's all wrapped up in love, isn't it? When we accept what God is doing in the world, it's out of love. And we just scatter the seed. This, this, this part is pretty tricky for us. God has a plan for you based in love. Because one of the things, we can't do anything unless we know we are completely, totally loved. We are completely and totally accepted. We are completely and totally embraced by God's arms. And we walk with God, we walk beside God, God carries us. Sometimes we're walking behind God, but God is always with us. Jesus said, you will never be alone. I will never leave you. That's a promise. That's who we're always walking with. And when we go out to the world, that's what we're delivering the world. That hope, that joy, that incredible sense of belonging. And we do it all in love. Love of God, God's love for us. The call to Macedonia is a real thing in every Christian's life. Now, you may not have to go across the Mediterranean, but you may have to go across the river. Yeah, may, you may have to go across the river, or you may have to go outside of the city. But it's a real thing. You may just have to go down the street or stand on the edge of the, edge of the church property. But the call to Macedonia is a real thing in every Christian's life. The question that we have to wrestle with is, do we accept the call? Are we ready for God to lead us? Do we accept that God is in charge and because of our love for God and God's love for us, that we can take that love to the world? The acceptance that God has a plan for everyone and it includes everyone, that God's love includes everyone, and that God's vision is not ours, but his. The one God shares with us, that God does not tell us to come and stay, but come and go. He calls us to go to wherever, to whomever he leads us to, in love, in acceptance, in hope. But he also knows we're not, we're human, and it's not easy. So I encourage you, read this passage again and again, and just see the amazing movement of God in people's lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we can come to you. We look to encouragement in our lives, Lord, as we move forward. We look to encouragement in this congregation as we connect with our, our city, with the people around us. We look forward, Lord, as we move forward to connect with your world. Lord, we think about the people this morning that are traveling, that are on the road, that are not here. We hold them up to you. Lord, we ask that uh, they know they're being prayed for by their brothers and sisters, that they're being cared for, and that they are in our thoughts and in our hearts. Lord, we ask you to bless them, and we ask this in Christ's name.